Hello everyone. Welcome to Nilanjana's exclusive English lessons. Today we are beginning with the first lesson of treasure chest. I'm sorry, this is the second lesson because I've already done the lesson the pedestrian. So today we are beginning with the second lesson with the photographer written by Stephen Leacock. Now this lesson has subdued humor. By subdued humor what I mean is beneath the humor the author has tried to portray the follies and the foibles of the society. what kind of mindset many people have in the society and usually such people emphasize a lot on the outward appearance uh, like outwardly if you look good uh, that is of utmost importance to many people so here that is what the narrator or the author talks about that we should not blindly go with the outward showy appearance but uh, rather we should always think about the inner beauty of an individual So this is the basic theme of the lesson. So as I explain the lesson, I'm going to cover the theme further. So let's begin. Watch the video till the end. Do not skip any part so that you don't miss out any explanation. I'm going to cover line by line all the important explanation of the lesson. All right. Now, the main theme of the lesson is basically body shaming, insecurity about our own appearance, and the denial of accepting who we are these are the three main things the story centers on okay so the author actually decided one day to visit a studio because he wanted to click a photograph of himself so the first thing is i want my photograph taken so right now he is inside the studio the photographer looked at me without enthusiasm like he was not that enthusiastic now why he was not enthusiastic there could be two reasons one reason is he is already uh, you know it's a normal client and he doesn't uh, seem very exciting uh, because maybe the features were quite uninteresting so he just looked at him without any enthusiasm he was a drooping man in a gray suit so he was a drooping man means he was not very straight his his shoulders were slightly bent with the dim eye of a natural scientist his eyes also looked very much like a natural scientist a scientist you know who is a scientist right you know somebody who does research he discovers something so he also had that kind of an eye but he did not have that sparkle or he did not have that kind of an enthusiasm but there is no need to describe him everybody knows what a photographer is like now here the author is trying to say that a photographer is a person who is like a stereotype now a stereotype means that set uh, a person with a set uh, ideology a person with a set features they look like you know always the same like a photographer always look uh, has the same kind of look similarly a scientist also has the same kind of a look a doctor they more or less look same so here is trying to say that he this man look like a photographer and he was just like any other photographer now how did he know from where did he gather the experience of how a photographer looks could be from his own personal experience maybe he had met whoever whichever photographs in his life they all looked more or less like you know, the kind of same appearance they had appearance doesn't mean the features appearance over here like the way they dress up the way they talk look like they have that kind of a uh, uh, you know the outward appearance so he felt that this man also looks more or less same it's like common understanding of how a photographer looks so what did he tell him sit there and wait and this man waited for an hour and while he waited what did he do he read the book this journals underline you can underline all these things you can get a question what was he doing while he was waiting so you can write you should write all these things okay So he read the Ladies Companion for 1912 the Girls Magazine and the Infants Journal I began to see I had done an unwarrantable thing unwarrantable means wrong in breaking in on the privacy of this man's scientific pursuits with a face like mine So he somehow felt that probably he has done a mistake why because this man's scientific pursuits means of the photographer was more like a scientist because they are always trying to research and build new things in that way he is scientific and he felt that probably he made a mistake in coming and trying to ask for getting his photograph clicked 
with a face like mine means with a face which is like so uninteresting and maybe not perfect at all like he was a very average looking man and he felt that maybe actually i did a wrong thing in uh, coming and disturbing this man like this after an hour the photographer opened the inner door and he said come in severely means in a very serious manner he said okay you can come in i went into the studio sit down i sat down in a beam of sunlight filtered through a sheet of factory cotton hung against a frosted skylight now those who are having some idea about photography you must have seen even if you not have done it in your uh, like with your personal experience you must have seen like you know the photographer when he tries to click a photograph he will make sure that his composition composition refers to the subject that he is trying to click has a perfect angle has the perfect lighting has the perfect setting so in order to do all that here the author was made to sit down in a beam of sunlight where the light was coming through and it was filtered through a sheet of factory cotton so there was a cotton sheet which was placed against this light all right why so that you know the light doesn't sound, uh, seem to be very harsh so when you are placing that cotton sheet uh, through the uh, when the light is coming through this sheet then it would give you a uh, like a you know a frosted appearance so this frosted skylight means it's going to give you a frosted and a hazy appearance so it will make you make the subject look uh, very contemplative and very nice basically he is trying to create the perfect composition the photographer rolled a machine into the middle of the room and crawled into it from behind so now he brings the machine and then he gets inside like he crawls inside it he was only in it a second just time enough for one look at me and then he was out again tearing at the cotton sheet and the window panes with a hooked stick apparently frantic for light and air so he went inside again he came outside then again he was trying to fix the cotton sheet and the window panes with a stick means he was just trying to get that perfect lighting and the perfect setting and he was apparently means seemingly he was very excited frantic is excited okay and uh, why he was so excited because he wanted to get that perfect light and air then he again crawled back into the machine and drew a little black cloth over himself This time he was very quiet in there. I knew that he was praying, and I kept still. So this man, the means the author who is trying to get his photograph clicked, was completely, uh, you know, like shocked to some extent, and he was like surprised at what is going on. Like this man was first of all, I was asked to wait for one hour. Now he is going inside hundred times, coming outside trying to fix this, trying to fix that. and then he again went inside that machine and then he was not nothing was heard so he is telling in a humorous manner that maybe i think he was praying so i also kept quiet i did not disturb him when the photographer came out at last he looked very grave grave is serious and shook his head so shook his head means he didn't like he didn't like whatever he was trying to click somehow he was not uh, liking the entire setting so here he tells that the face is quite wrong means your face is not appropriate now what a uh, remark is this do first of all do we have any hand on the way our face has been like given by god no right so the face is quite wrong so this is a very uh, uh, you know not, not at all a suitable remark a statement to be said by anyone then this man also very patiently said yeah i know i have always known it he sighed so he didn't like it means he didn't like the way this man looked i think he said the face would be better three quarters full now three quarters full actually refers to the position of the face if you keep it at an angle then uh, you know it's like little bit turned away from the camera means when you are looking at the camera 
then your face may look very wide and broad but if you f keep your face turned away from the camera three quarters full means probably at an angle of 45 degree a little tilted okay again this is talking he's talking about a technique of clicking photograph which will make the subject's face look better okay so this is what he said that i think it would be better if you keep your face at an angle of 45 degree little turned away from the camera so this man said yeah yeah i'm sure it would and very enthusiastically because uh, i was glad to find that the man had such a human side to him so would yours in fact how many faces one sees that are apparently hard narrow limited but the minute you get them three quarters full, they get wide, large, almost boundless. So he is telling that sometimes when there are many faces which are like very narrow, very limited, there's not much scope, like very dull, you can say. Okay. However, if they are placed at a particular angle, they look much better when the photograph is clicked. This is what he's trying to say. So this is a photographic composition technique. Those who are into photography, they use a number of techniques to make the subject look better. But the photographer had ceased to listen. Ceased means stopped. He was not listening. He came over, took my head in his hands, twisted it sideways. I thought he meant to kiss me and I closed my eyes. Now, I thought he meant to kiss me means actually he's uncertain that what is this man trying to do? He is confused. And the way he came and he twisted his head, uh, took my head in his hands, that was quite inappropriate. Why? Because it's like intruding into somebody's privacy. Suddenly somebody comes and twists the head, tilts your um, face to an angle. So this is like, you know, not respecting anybody's privacy. And at the same time, he was also feeling very uh, like he's talking about his discomfort so that is the reason he told that i thought actually he meant to kiss me so I, and i closed my eyes but i was wrong he twisted my face as far as it would go and then he stood looking at it he sighed again so again he was not happy i don't like the head then he went back to the machine and took another look opened the mouth a little i started to do so close it then he looked again the ears are bad. Droop them a little more. Now these instructions are very funny. Droop, the, droop your, how can you droop your ears? Droop your ears a little more. Thank you. Now the eyes. Roll them, on, roll them in under the lids. Put the hands on the knees, please, and turn the face a little upward. Yes, yes, that's better. Now just expand the lungs. So hump the neck. That's it. And just contract the waist. So he is trying to give him all kind of instructions so that, you know, his photograph comes out really well. But that was not the author's intention. He just wanted a photograph of his which is original and which is, which is going to portray the way he actually is. And then he tells, I don't still like the face. It's just a trifle too full. Trifle means little bit. It's little bit too full. That means it's like, you know, the face is turned too much towards the camera. The subject's face means the author's face is turned slightly too much towards the camera. But now he got really annoyed because again and again he was finding fault with the author's face. So I swung myself round on the stool and he said, stop. I said with emotion. Now he got emotional because he felt humiliated. No, somebody who is again and again finding faults with the way you look. Of course, it is humiliating for that person. So he said, it is my face. It is not yours. And it is my ears, my mouth. And I have always loved it. Okay. Uh, is, I lived it for, for, that means I lived with it for 40 years. So he's, a 40, he's 40 years old. This is a hint over here. If you get a question, how old was the author? He was 40 years old. And I know it's false. I know the shortcomings of my face. I know it's out of drawing. I know it wasn't made, made for me, but it is my face. And he got emotional and there was almost a break in his voice. But he went on. I've learned to love it. This is my mouth, not yours. These are mine ears. And if your machine is too narrow, he was about to get up. 
and leave and that's when the photographer clicked. The snake, this sound is that of the shutter. He pulled a string, the photograph taken, I could see the machine still staggering from the shop. Staggering over here means shaking, trembling. I think the photographer pursing his lips, means pressing his lips in a pleased smile and he said that I just caught the features just in a moment of animation. So, I said bitingly, features, huh? you didn't think I could animate them I suppose, but let me see the picture. So then he said, no, actually you have to come on Saturday. I will develop the negative first and I will let you see a proof of it. So on Saturday he goes back. The photographer beckoned me, beckoned means called me in. And I thought he seemed quieter and graver than before. Graver means serious. I think too there was a certain pride in his manner. Like he was very happy with the way he has you know created this picture so there was some a sense of pride in his behavior he unfolded the proof of a large photograph and we both looked at it in silence is it me i asked yes it is you and we went on looking at it so the picture was very different from the way he looked now here we'll come to see what are the changes that he has done the negative is ready. The final print was yet to be done. So he was showing him the negative. So he, this man, author is telling the eyes, they're not like mine. Like, oh no, I have retouched them. And so like I have, you know, done whatever was required. And they come out so well, no? Splendidly means so nicely. Fine. But my eyebrows are also not like that. He said, no, actually the eyebrows are removed because there's a process which is called the Delphide and then with this we can put in the new one so he's talking about those techniques which are used uh, you know in those applications like photoshop where your entire face can be changed uh, like if somebody has bald hair somebody is bald he can have new hair so your your entire appearance can be changed with all this that is what he's trying to say you will notice here where we have applied it to carry the hair away from the bro i don't like the hair low on the skull so uh, this man is again humiliating and you know, talking about his features that I don't like the hair low on the skull. Oh, you don't, don't you? So this man is getting again angry. No, I don't care for it. I like to get the hair clear back to the superficies means the outer face. So I, I like the hair in this way. And make out a new bro line means your original eyebrows are removed and a completely new bro line is uh, created. What about the mouth? Is that mine? It's also adjusted a little. Yours is too low. I found I couldn't use it. Then he said, the years, I think they strike me as a good likeness. So some only thing which I find similar to my original face are the years. Yes, that's so. But I can fix that all right in the print. We have a process now, the sulphide, for removing the years entirely. I'll see. So, you know, he was going on and on with his techniques and, you know, all the things that he knows about. His expertise in creating something new. And that's the reason probably he's called a scientist. Now, this man lost all his control and he said, listen. And fully animated features means his face was very annoyed. And he said, spoke with a withering scorn. Withering scorn refers to a hatred for this man, for the photographer. And what did he say? I came here for a photograph, a picture, something which would have looked like me, an original picture which would have actually looked like me. The way God gave me my face, humble though the gift may have been, means it can be a very simple face. Okay, of course, I may not have striking extraordinary features, a perfect face for your photograph photography but it is given by god and i want something that my friends might keep after my death like i want a original photograph of mine so that you know when i'm no longer there in this world my friends can look at that face and remember me but i think i was mistaken go on then with your brutal work take your negative Whatever it is you call it, dip it in sulphide, bromide, oxide, cowhide, anything you like. 
रिमूव द आईज करेक्ट द माउथ एडजस्ट द फेस रिस्टोर द लिप्स रीएनिमेट द नेक टाई रिकन्स्ट्रक्ट द वेस्ट कोट कोट इट विद एन इंच ऑफ ग्लॉस शेड इट एम्बॉस इट गिल्ड इट टिल इवन यू एक्नोलेज दैट इट इज फिनिश्ड देन वेन यू हैव डन ऑल दैट कीप इट फॉर योर सेल्फ एंड योर फ्रेंड्स दे मे वैल्यू टू इट टू मी इट इज बट अ वर्थलेस बबुल सो अ वर्थलेस बबुल हियर रेफर्स टू अ वर्थलेस थिंग इट डजेंट मेक एनी सेंस टू मी आई ब्रोक इन टू टीयर्स एंड लेफ्ट ऑल राइट सो एट दी एंड ही टोल दिस मैन दैट whatever you want to do with my print with my photograph go do it dip it in sulfide bromide like these are all you know this terms are unknown to this man because he is a layman in photography he doesn't know what is all that so he takes anything see he talks about sulfide bromide oxide cowhide anything you like and then if you want to remove my eyes take away my ears remove my eyebrow change my lips and you know change me in every way possible but when you are finally done with it i am no longer interested keep your creation for you and your friends for me it is worthless why why it is worthless because i wanted my original face and i believe in originality all right so this is the end of the story so even though it's very humorous but i hope all of you can understand that how uh how the author has criticized uh the photographer's attempt to move away from the original and only concentrate on the outward beauty outwardly trying to make you look perfect and in the process of doing so you lose your originality if you think this video was helpful do subscribe to the channel and do share this video with your friends uh i'm sure many of you would be benefited with this and of course julius caesar act three videos are also available on my channel which is a part of your grade 10 syllabus so this is where you need to go if you want to watch the act three videos that's all for today thank you so much and have a nice day